we'll get a microphone to Mike, go ahead. Matt, well, Luke Cipino had a fantastic game for them. But in that second half run, when they took control, it right. seemed like it was Galloway and some other guys that, yeah. that did more damage against you in that stretch. Yeah, no question, Mike. Um, you know, Galloway hit the 1-3 the in attack. I think Miller Cobb hit the one from the corner. Um, you know, when you're going to go in double, like, you can't let them out of the double. And they had some real clear passes. So there's risk involved. We do it, like, not just because it's Trace Jackson Davis, but we double a lot. But we don't double off the lane a lot. And so, like, going with the guard there, if you're going to double them and you can't limit their vision, you know, people are going to get open shots. It's just like us. Like, they look really good at what they did tonight, and we look poor because they made some open shots, and we didn't. And so, but we kept getting open shots, and so did they. They actually probably took tougher shots than us, but they had the right guy taking tougher shots. So Jalen Pochettino was fabulous. And he killed us at Bloomington really getting into some action coming up through the middle and crossing out and getting to his right hand. We really wanted to keep him off his right hand. And so he, uh, he sent a news flash so he can play off his left hand. He was, he was really, really good. Um, to be able to, I don't know if the right word is bottle up Trace Jackson Davis because he just didn't get a lot of attempts. He just didn't, they didn't go to him a lot because, because Huchifino was playing so well, and rightfully so. Um, but if you told me that he would have 10 and eight, uh, I would think we would be sitting pretty. But it kind of shows you how dangerous Indiana can be with that one-two combo there with Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Huchifino. Matt, um, you keep saying you're not gonna let bad shooters take shots. And I feel mm -hmm. like you're not, but right. what, what do you put your finger on? The, you know, five of 23, two of those come late, and it's no it's question. four losses late have, or recently have been poor shooting performances from the outside. Yeah, no question. Like, we lived with, um, you know, we won the Big Ten one year, and Carson Edwards was here, and he shot 28% from three. So I lived with that question all the time. But I live with guys like that that can shoot the basketball. And, and so, like, you know, a majority of our shots I thought were pretty good shots. Like if you're gonna like just take him out of the equation and double him, and then you're gonna get wide open shots. Like, you, you know, you gotta step up and make them tonight. We didn't make them. So, but I believe in our guys. Um, I believe in their ability to shoot the basketball and step into wide open shots and be able to make them. And, um, you know, we just gotta be better. I didn't have anybody on our team trying to miss. You know, they, they you know, sometimes you, you kind of want something and then when somebody just simply plays better than you and shoots better than you and gets you on the run, you know, it, it's tough to get back into the game. Matt, it's been a rough stretch result-wise the last few games, obviously. Mm -hmm. What is the message right afterwards to your team? You know, just stay process-based. Like, you know, have to be better. Like, we should have been, we should have been in a way. They played so well in that first eight to ten minutes of the second half. But we had so many shots at the rim. When you out-rebound somebody by 16, and then you shoot 21 more free throws than them, that is an unbelievable advantage. And we didn't take advantage of it. We didn't finish at the rim like we should. We didn't make some shots like we should. But it wasn't one of those effort things. I didn't think it was like a poor effort. I thought our guys gave a good effort. Um, they competed. Um, they, they were better than us. They, they made shots, and, and, and we didn't. So we got to be able to fix that. But. Um, for the games that we've had this year, you out-rebound your opponent by 16 and the turnovers are about equal and you're getting 21 more free throws. Like, I'll, I'll take that every single game. You gotta, you know, you gotta make a couple. And you, you just can't get down and then expect to make a run if you can't get stops, right? And then and that's kind of where we were. And then, you know, we would do good things, they'd foul us, and then we, you know, we'd split them or we missed two. And it just, when, you, when you're behind, you, you can't trade baskets right there. You know, and that's kind of what happened. Coach, uh, I, obviously they started the second half strong and kind of pulled away, but why has this team struggled to hold on to leads in the second half? Ours? Yes. You're talking about a four-point lead to start the second half? I just thought they played better. I wouldn't say like holding on to, I don't know what game you're, you're, you're talking about, but, um, you know, when you're in that position and you're, you know, you're starting the, the second half, just like closing out the first half, like we make a big three, Brandon makes a big three right there. We have a nice play right away. Uh, Zach makes a nice pass to Caleb. You know, we get a dunk or a layup. And then they just kind of went on that run. And uh, I can go through, like, you know, like what happened. I thought we had a couple poor double teams right there. I, I thought Trace, I mean, I thought Jalen hood Shafino got too deep a couple times. And when you get deep, we got to switch that late. And we just kind of, like, left it there and just let him kind of hang. And he kind of hits that step back, 12-footer, 15-footer. Um, we got to play better. 
you know, more than anything. They, you know, give Indiana credit, they played better than we did. Coach, I think I, over here in the corner. Uh, Thank you, sir. <laughs> I think it'd be safe to say, you know, this IU Purdue rivalry is as alive as it's been in, in a few years. Yeah. With with how intense that Purdue IU matchup has been in both games this mm -hmm. season, you know, what does that do for the fans? And then also, how does that play into, you know, how basketball just means more in the state of Indiana? Yeah, well, we recruit the states really hard, and um, you know, we got a lot of guys from Indiana on our team, and obviously, you know, getting swept, you know, by them is not something that you know we want to have on our resume, but we do, and. Um, you know, it's just, I think it was 1994 is the last time they played, we played, and both teams were ranked. Is that right? I got, I've seen that right on Twitter? Because there's no way Twitter could be wrong. <laughs> right? So that has to be a fact. Um, so laughing is a lot better than crying. <laughs> but, um, no, I think it's great. I think it's, you know, I've, I've had opportunities to leave, and one of the things that I always think about if I leave and I'm not the coach at Purdue is I can't walk back into Assembly Hall and compete against them as the head coach at Purdue, and that bothers me. And like that's a, it's a great feeling, and, and not always are you going to be successful. And I think that's what keeps you coming back for more, because um, people can dissect you, but people can't tell you how you feel. They have no idea like what you sacrifice and what you do um, to try to have a good program. They have no idea what the players do. So like we got a bunch of players in there that you know they're heartbroken, they're disappointed, but. Someone stuck it to us, take it. You gotta sit in it. If you're gonna do something about it, you gotta sit in it and you gotta be honest with yourself. And but I but I think that's what it that's what it really gets to at a rivalry like that. Like it's you know, you gotta throw everything out. But if you put everything on a you know, that's even up, you know, like you're gonna you're gonna put yourself in a good position if you keep getting the right guys. We got the right guys, like we're good. Um, but you know, it's coming down here to stretch and you know, everybody wants to play well, and everybody's kind of jockeying for position for either win the Big Ten or get in the NCAA tournament. And you know, you got to play for keeps. You got to, you know, we got to produce a little bit better than we did tonight. What does Brandon give you tonight? <coughs> and right. how much do you need him now down the stretch here yeah. to have, have similar performances? Yeah. Well, I thought you know he, he really played hard. You know, I thought he did some really good things on Hood Shafino, and he made a couple. Um, Hood Shafino missed a couple shots that went in. No, it sounds crazy. I mean, I, but like he like hit, I was right there in the ball. I'm like, hey, that's off. And then it hit there, boom, 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 and it went in. Um, but when it's your night, it's your night. But I thought Brandon did some really good things. I thought he was competitive, um, took on the challenge. Um, obviously, he makes that big shot at the end of the first half. Um, but no, I, he, you just got to stay with it. You know, you know, his thing is consistency. You know, if he, he gives that kind of effort and that um, kind of focus, you know, he, he's really going to help himself because – when you can guard and you can make open shots with our group and with Zach, you know, we, we have to do a better job of complimenting Zach Eady. You know, I think that's a very obvious statement, but we, we have to do a better job of complimenting him. Zach, sorry. Back here. Go, go ahead, thank you. Sorry, going back to Hood Shafino, when he's capable of scoring multiple levels, what is right? What is difficult about basically getting him to play faster than he wants to, yeah. and getting him off his pace, I guess? We're in a little different position because we can't get aggressive with Zach and some of those ball screen things. So we can get flattened to a drop, if that makes sense to you. Um, we can get up. If you get up with Zach, then we're, we're susceptible to those flip-ups that Trey Scott and Bloomington, those flip-up lobs. You know, and so like Zach, like, you got to understand that. So we were trying to keep him away from that. And we did. Like, look at Trace Jackson's involvement in the game in the first half. Like, I know he got a couple fouls, but, like, he would, you know, he put Shavino played so well, they didn't even go to him. Like, they went to him the first play, we made a steal, and, like, they went to him a couple more times because they didn't have to. Um, but, no, we, um, you know, he, he, he's tough. I don't know if we see him again. Like, that, that's, that's impressive. Very few people have rolled through here and done that, if anybody. That was 19 years old. Like that, that was impressive what he did. Like think about his easy baskets that he had. He might have had one, had that one layup in front of me. Think about it, he scores 14 field goals. He's a 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guard. Like, you know, he made tough shots all night. I know there's a lot of people here, but when you can go left and you can go right and you can make the, you get to your kill spots and make those pull-ups and pass the basketball, because he's a willing passer. Like he's not one of those guys that if you take his shot away, you do whatever, like he's going to be frustrated and take bad ones. Like, he'll just play a role then and distribute the basketball. And that's he, – he's got a bright future. Because guys that can do that consistently, make tough shots and distribute and make his team better, 
you know, there's not very many guys like that out there. Same with the mic. And I'm sure you'll trade a loss to Indiana for wins in the NCAA tournaments. You got two freshmen who, you know, right. received a lot of praise for most of the season, and I don't think they've probably struggled a whole lot in their basketball careers up to this point. Right. What do you hope they learn from these struggles that help you win an NCAA tournament? Yeah. You know, just stay with it. Uh, that's why I told them afterwards. I said, like, don't, like, be honest about the film, be honest about what happened, um, and, and stay with it. Like, you know, keep taking your shots, keep taking good shots, keep being aggressive. Um, you know, they're, they're both very, very good players. They have a lot of responsibility for young guys, you know, on our team. And, uh, you know, we, we expect a lot from them and they expect a lot from themselves. So um, just stay process based. Like, guys aren't doing things wrong. You know, you, you got to complete plays, right? You got to get stops and you got to be able to make some shots. And, you know, like I said earlier, like, no one was out there trying to miss shots. Like, they, and I don't think we had too many bad shots. You know, we just got to be able to complete plays. And both of those guys have done a lot of really good things for us. They just got to, you know, stay consistent. Last one, Mike. Yeah. You mentioned about being process-based. Yes, sir. During the season. When it's February 25th. Yes. The urgency that implies, how much of it must you incorporate in, into what goes forward? Yeah, you know, a lot of people want change when it happens. And, like, we just got to be better at what we do. Like, when you go forward, a lot of people are like, well, that, that, that's not working. It's like, well, what they did tonight, like, that, that's working when the ball goes in? Yeah. Yeah, when the ball goes in, it looks like it's working. When the ball doesn't go in, it doesn't look like it's working. Jalen Hochefino has really struggled on the road shooting. But I told our guys, I said, when he gets it rolling, guys, throw all those numbers out. If he doesn't, then those numbers apply <coughs> because that's the kind of player he is, you know, because he can really get some things rolling. But, no, just staying with – you know, what we work on. Like, you know, you start in June and now you get into these times of the year, you're gonna have some you're gonna have some times like this. You gotta keep going. And then people that look at it and don't understand that has have not been through it. Because just like you can be on a high and that could be a negative, you can be on a low and it could be a positive. Like you've seen guys struggle and then be able to turn things around. I mentioned Carson Edwards before and he had struggled shooting in his last couple games of the season, even though we clinched uh, a tie for the Big Ten title, and then we got beat in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament. He, he struggled again, and those guys were like, "Man, what are we going to do?" I said, "We're not going to do anything different." And they go, "But what? You know, what's the issue here?" I said, "We got a bunch of makes coming our way," and so that's I, I believe in guys that can shoot. Like I, the guys that I've recruited and I've looked at, I personally go out and recruit a lot. I go and watch them. I get their numbers. I, you know, those guys can make shots. Like I'm not worried about that. Um, you get worried about if that happens at the NCAA tournament, right? Because you got to be able to make shots. You got to be able to do that. But what are you going to do? Give a speech about it? Like you got to stay process based, and you got to keep working. You got to keep putting in the time. And our guys do that. So I'm, you know, I'm supportive of them and, and stand behind them. And I, I think we're going to, you know, be better because of it. It's the only way to do it. It's the only way to, you know, keep an attitude like that, and then have that trickle down to your whole team. You know, yelling and screaming and going crazy because guys are doing what you ask them and they're playing hard. And they just missed open shots. Like that's not going to get you anywhere. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt.